The most frequent population that we will see as we see as clinicians in breast cancer is the patients who have a node negative disease, invasive breast cancer, node negative disease, ER positive or hormone receptor positive, and ER2 negative. And this is about 50% of the patient population. And we know also that in that population, only about 4% of the patient will benefit from the addition of chemotherapy. The problem is that with the standard methods of uh, an analysis or evaluation is that you cannot really predict who will have, the, will be among those 4% who will benefit from chemotherapy. So the Telerix trial was designed to uh, study that patient population and see if the patient were in a very what we would say the low risk under 10 or under 11, for example, versus the higher risk over 25, who would be if it come chemotherapy, and in the low risk trial uh, to confirm that patients with hormone therapy without any chemotherapy would benefit really from uh, only hormone therapy. We also would like also to have more data on the intermediate risk to understand at what threshold the patients, uh, what uh, threshold or what score the patient population would benefit chemotherapy uh, in that intermediate risk, or if they do it, or if they do not at all. I thought that would be a good result, but as good as this one, to have about 98% patient free of disease, distant disease after so many years uh, having entered the trial. It's uh, something that I don't think we have ever seen before in medicine. And the data clearly show that the patients who have this category of disease have an extremely good prognosis. And the myth of where you have cancer, you die, I think has been seriously challenged by the results of that trial. And that's very good news for the patient. I think when you look at uh, the patient, the physician point of view, and you ask them without Oncotype DX, how confident are you in the recommendation that you do, that you make? And then you order the test, and you ask again the physician three questions. How unsure was you? Would you give chemo, or would you use hormone therapy alone? And you redo you have the question after the test, and there will be about 50% of the physician who will change their recommendation. 30% if you ask them chemo versus no chemo, but if you ask them if they were unsure, I think their decision is more clear after they have the results of the test. Now, and you have the patient after that, how confident or how Anxious are you vis-a-vis -vis the recommendation made by your physician before the test? And now, how confident or uh, nervous are you about the recommendation made by your physician after he had the test? And there is a strong decrease in the degree of anxiety of the patients with the use of the test. In terms of quality of life, this will definitely affect the quality of life of the patient because it's really related to the fact that you have chemotherapy or not. The patient, when they come to your office before they say hello, they ask you, will I get chemo? So they are very, very anxious about to have chemo or not. And when you have, you make your you decision and your recommendation on a test that has been proven in a certain patient of population and validated that the benefit of chemotherapy is null in a certain patient population that will be a great, great, great benefit for them and for the quality of life. To be away from chemo is a major step in the addition to, chemo, to quality of life.